Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Havoc. This unboxing is brought to you by Havoc Plus and our friends over at Lumina. Lumina sent this new webcam over. It's a brand that's new on the market. You might start seeing them around Twitter in the content creator space. I'm super excited to get this unboxed. Once again, this is ad content. Lumina did send me this camera to unbox for you all. Let's roll the intro and get into it. So right here we have the Lumina box, we have the cam, pretty simplistic box, which I enjoy. If you know me, I don't like a whole lot of marketing and uh, other doodads and stuff in here. As you see on the back, look your best on every call, vibrant colors with automatic color calibration, realistic background blur with AI depth sensing, automatic picture framing with an AI cameraman. And that's a 4K AI camera. The world's first AI powered webcam. I've seen this around on some content creators posts on Twitter and the cam actually follows them when you move around. So I'm excited to check that out. If that's actually the case, I'm probably gonna use this for two different things. One is my work calls, Zoom calls. And the second is maybe some of the live podcasting I might start doing. Nothing on that side. And then on the bottom, it just says, the webcam reinvented. So let's go ahead and unbox it and take a look at what we got. All right, very minimal boxing. Like I said, I really enjoy that. Here we have the camera itself. That's probably the lens part. We have a quick start guide, a couple boxes. Inside this box, I'm gonna guess is maybe a cable to hook it up. Let's take a look. That in fact we do, we have a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable. And this other baggie, we have a USB Type-C to USB-A. So this is nice that it gives you the option depending on what connections you have available on your motherboard. Obviously this is gonna be a USB-C camera because it's a 4K. And here, We have a little mount, so this can actually mount onto the, your monitor. It's got the little lip there. Um, or you can also screw it onto a tripod or some other type of mount. So if you have like an Elgato Multi mount, you could connect it to that on top of that ball, connect your camera there, and you're good to go. I like that it comes with a mount. Not every camera actually does come with a mount anymore. Um, and also that is removable, so if you don't want to use it, that's great. And then over here we have, looks like maybe a way to color calibrate the actual camera. This is actually a metal card, got the Lumia logo. And then on the other side, there's a QR code to scan that and some colors. I'm gonna guess it's gonna tell us to do, um, do that in the quick start guide, but maybe calibrating the colors of your camera, making sure it looks good. More packaging. And then that's the user guide. And then finally, we have a little Allen wrench. And I'm guessing that is so we can connect the camera to the actual monitor mount. Let me go ahead and attach the camera to the mount. We'll get it hooked up to the computer, take a look at the software, and we'll go from there. So a couple other things here with the camera before we get into the setup is I attach the monitor mount to the bottom and I just screw it, rotate it around, and it doesn't screw on all the way. What you have to do is actually open it up and that little Allen wrench we had, there's an Allen head screw in there you use the Allen wrench to actually tighten it down. So this gives you the option, which not a lot of cameras do, to get it in the direction you want it to actually face, and then you can tighten it. That's good because some of the monitor mounts that I've seen on cameras is you'll rotate this around and like maybe it's tight right there. So now you don't have that, now you're kind of stuck with, man, my camera doesn't like line up correctly to the direction and angle I want it to. There are some other cameras on the market um, that only give you a front facing option if they have the monitor mount built into the camera. So the cool thing with this camera is we have the option that we can actually rotate it. You know, your monitor is always gonna be in one straight stance. You can actually move the camera around if you wanna look at different things. So that's a really cool thing. Another really cool thing about this camera is you have this little privacy shutter in the front. There's a little magnet inside of it. So if you rotate it to the side, 
it'll kind of stay there. And then if I move it just a little bit over here, you can see it kind of popped into place. Pop, so it makes it easier. This does completely remove, so if you just don't want to mess with it at all, you can take that off. But I know a lot of content creators, we like to have those little privacy security guards. Really nice to have your USB-C connection on the back, on the side, the Illumina logo, and then on the front. Looks like we also have uh, built-in microphones right here. Um, and I don't know, this might be speakers, or that might be other. We'll have to look at the directions to see what those are. I realized earlier I said it was an Allen wrench. It's actually a hex wrench that you use, and it's a hex screw head there. But I looked at the directions really quick and found something pretty cool that so these two little slots on the outside here, those are the microphones. This next little slot, that is the LED indicator if the mic is enabled or disabled. And the little dot next to that there is the LED indicator if the camera is enabled or disabled. So that's pretty cool. It shows you the camera and the mic options on there. All right, let's head over to the computer, get it all configured, set up, and see what it looks like. Here we are over on the PC. I have the Lumina camera hooked up via USB-C to my gaming computer. I'm recording this via OBS. In a second, I'm gonna switch over to a different scene OBS where I'm gonna show you the camera and some of the setup features and windows within the Lumina software. Just out of the box, it was a little bit of a pain to try to get set up. Um, the software kept telling me it can't find the camera. So I had to plug it in multiple times the USB-C until I finally got it to, to recognize and we got a software update. There's a whole licensing process you'll go through. Um, the wizard walks you through it. The license doesn't cost any money. It comes with your camera and uh, it does a pretty good job of getting that license for you. So you don't have to really enter a whole lot of information in. So let me switch over to the scene here. And you can see here on the top, that is like the actual Lumina camera itself. On the bottom is the kind of software setup. And then on the right side is the actual configuration box. So it's not an ideal window setup here just because of how different things are organized and um, Lumina doesn't allow you that I can figure out how to resize some of these things. So it is what it is. Let's go through it. I am recording this on my blue microphone. You can see right up here. We'll test out the microphone built into the Lumina camera here in a bit. So you have this frame option down here. You can select different frames and what that does, it just literally puts a frame around your window. So they have a few built-in ones. You can see it automatically just changes the Ukrainian flag. So it, it, it's really cool. Um, I can see that being used on Zoom meetings and stuff for kind of fun backgrounds. Uh, name badge settings, you'll click that and you can actually add your name to the overlay. So like if you're on a business call or something, people can see your name if you want to add it to your camera. The AI effects resolution, this setting you have three different resolutions. You have 1920 by 1080, 3840 by 2160, and 1280 by 720. So this is a 4K camera. For this example, I'm just recording in 1920 by 1080 because that's how I have my OBS set up. And I think that's probably what most of you would probably use anyway. And then on the right side, there's different profiles you can set up if you like different settings. We're going to keep it here at the default, but you can do exposure, white balance, hue, saturation, so on and so forth. There is a zoom option. So you have multiple options here if you want to zoom in. The slider, it zooms in and out. The little peoples over here, we'll talk about that in a second. That's cameraman mode. There's a blur option. I'll go ahead and blur here and you can see it does blur the background. It does an all right option. It does look very artifacty, kind of like there's a lot of AI processing. It's better than the built-in stuff with like Zoom and Teams and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna knock it um, for just a click and go. It's actually a pretty great solution when it comes to the blur effect. Let's talk about this uh, cameraman mode. So what you can do here is I'll click the middle one and it'll zoom in and this is literally meant to be like a cameraman or a camera person and the camera will follow you around so if I move over here you see the camera kind of zooms in and follows this is all AI stuff AI zoom and the camera does a pretty good job at following you around would you use this as a content creator in gaming probably not unless you're all over the place um, I could really see this being beneficial and useful for those uh, cooking streamers when you're kind of walking around the kitchen and doing crazy stuff, have all your, your pans everywhere. This does a really pretty good job at following you around. See if I go over here, it zooms a little bit that way. If I come over this way. So 
it does a pretty good job. There's another setting you can go even further in if you want to get the super up close. So it's it's pretty good options. I'll keep it on the middle one for, for this. And then if we go over here to the right side, we have different options here. So when you plug the camera in, you're gonna have updates to do. There's a firmware update, super simple. Like I said, I had to plug it in a few times to get it to recognize that it was actually able to plug in, recognize the camera and do the update. General, this talks about what you're doing right now. We have our effects resolutions, um, your idle background. So if the camera goes to sleep or it's trying to um, wake up, you can choose a different background that shows up there. Open Lumina for each call. I think that's uh, connects it to like Zoom and whatnot. Um, open animation keyboard for each call. There's an animation keyboard, it's like emojis and stuff you can click on, uh, I, yeah, whatever. And then auto hide the preview after 30 seconds. So what that means is when you start the software, it'll have the high, it'll have the auto preview of your screen at the bottom of this option. And if you click that auto hide, that will auto hide it to save some processing power. I'm going to keep it up and running just for this video so you can kind of see um, everything that goes on. In advance, this is kind of where you can do a lot of actual configuration of the camera. So we have on manual or they have a scene. So back over here, we have on the, le on the uh, left side where you configuration, you can create your different scenes. So if I do manual, it can literally just change the exposure and stuff like monkey around with it. I'm going to keep it on this kind of scene. It'll automatically do it for me. Uh, all your colors, your zoom, your brightness, so on and so forth, tilt. Down here is kind of the cameraman part is where kind of the meat of the configuration is. So the cameraman uh, zoom, I, I have it set at 2.8, but what you can do is the cameraman speed. That's how fast the camera kind of follows you. So if I crank this up to five, you see it, it moves much quicker than it did before. Or if I put it back down to, I don't know, what was that, two? But at two, it's a little slower. I put it back down to 0.1. See how slowly it's reacting. So um, it really just depends on how much you want, how quickly you want to do it. I'll keep it at 2.5, which is 50%. And then the camera went offset. So if you wanted to like focus um, on a different asp, like X axis. Uh, or cool thing about this is the arrow keys will actually work too. Set it back to zero. Um, and then blur, same thing. You can set your blur stuff here. Blur ratio, and then the padding, sharpness, curve gain, curve offset, and curve lift badge so back here at the bottom where we said name badge that'll actually just pop this up but you can do whatever uh, if i enable the name badge overlay you can see it says lumia user um, everything on the bottom in the actual lumina like system it's it's not mirrored uh it, but in obs you can see it's reversed it's mirrored so it looks you actually read it on your side so i could put havoc right there and then you tell where you want it to be. Pretty simple. You put a logo in there if you wanted to or turn it off. So let me switch over to recording on the Lumina mic so you can hear what that sounds like. Right now I'm switched over to using the microphone built into the Lumina camera. I am probably about a foot and a half away from it so you can hear the sound. Um, when I tested this earlier, it sounded kind of a little tinny, um, but I think it does a really good job for picking up your voice. And this will be really great for video calls when you're coming on to a work call on Zoom or Microsoft Teams, WebEx. Personally, I feel the microphone that's built into this camera is going to be better than any microphone that you have built into your laptop. I foresee this being used as a really nice travel companion for content creators that go to shows or on the road and want to stream. This is great, it's, you throw it in your backpack, it's super small, it's super mobile, super agile, and uh, the microphone will probably do just fine. Now I'm back over here on the main scene OBS, and I wanna mention something really quick. When you're in OBS and you click configure the camera, 
it will still pop up that kind of generic Windows dialog box that has the minimal stuff to configure the camera. If you have a camera like the Logitech C920 or C922, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So this does the same exact thing. What you need to do is you actually have to fire up the Lumina configuration software and then you can configure everything in there. And that'll do all the really kind of cool stuff. I've seen that other cameras, when you try to fire up their software while OBS is open, it gives an error that the camera is already in use. So it was really nice to see that the Lumina software is able to use the camera while OBS is also using the camera. And uh, you could see that in the other scene I was showing you right here. The top camera is OBS, the bottom camera is in the Lumina software. So you don't get that option on a lot of cameras. Kudos to you, Lumina team. And there you have it, the USB-C webcam from Lumina. Again, this is a 4K camera, has a lot of AI features in it. Pretty good quality, really enjoy it. Thank you so much to my friends at Lumina for sending this so we can unbox it for you today. I'll put a link down in the description below of where you can pick this camera up. And if you wanna talk about it more, head over to my Discord server. We can sync up and chat more about this Lumina camera. Until next time, have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.